The following is a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League. The New York Riptide returned to NYCB Live at the Coliseum, where a week ago tonight they celebrated their first win in franchise history. They look for win number two tonight against the San Diego Seals next on MSG Plus and BR Live. Tonight, it's the return to Long Island for the Riptide at the tail end of a back-to-back -back after falling last night in Philly. From NYCB Live, home of the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum, this matchup features two teams looking for their second wins of the season as the San Diego Seals tussle with the New York Riptide. Welcome inside Nassau Coliseum with former Cornell standout and NLL champion Mitch Belial. I'm Dave Leto. Danny Wexelman will join us shortly. And Mitch, tonight we'll see the debut of Miles Jones for the Riptide. This is an exciting night for Long Island and for the Riptide as Miles Jones is going to be here surrounded by friends and family, excited to do his thing on the indoor floor. How does Reggie Thorpe plan to fit him into the team? Coach Thorpe talked about utilizing his, his size on the defensive end, so expect him to come out of the defensive door. But then also with his athleticism, don't be surprised if he stays and plays a little bit of offense. So I talked to Miles before the game. He's excited. He's ready to go. And he said, don't overthink it. Just play lacrosse. And with more on Jones, here's Danny Wexelman. Miles is a hometown kid. He went to high school just 20 minutes away from here at Walt Whitman. And I caught up with his high school coach, Bob Howell, earlier this week, who said Miles is the greatest athlete he's ever coached. One of Bob's assistant coaches saw Miles playing baseball as a kid. They recognized how great of an athlete he was and convinced him to play lacrosse. So Miles started on JV as an eighth grader, played all four years on varsity. And Bob said he's got deceptive speed. He takes big strides. And if you saw Miles coming by, you might want to step aside. He and Kieran McCardle played against each other in high school basketball. So I asked Kieran, what do you think about having Miles on your team? And he said he can't wait to watch him grow, and he's a great guy to watch play. Dave? Thank you very much, Danny. And for this New York team, Mitch, we called the game last night. It was a 14-6 loss in Philadelphia. In fact, in that second half, Philadelphia enjoyed a 9-1 run against the Riptide. As far as guys who need to step up, let's start with Kieran McCardle. He had one assist last night. What are you looking for from McCardle in this game tonight against San Diego? Yeah, Danny brought up that Kieran McCardle and Miles Jones have played together in the past. I think look for them to work a little bit in tandem when he's given that opportunity on offense. But Kieran McCardle has to get to the inside, and I'd like to see him shoot more. I think he's got a great shot and when it's falling he's been scoring hat tricks three goals at a time but when he's missing he's got zero. And you've touched on time and time again guys to get to the middle. One of those players Jake Fox hasn't played in the last two only one game played against the Wings back in the lineup tonight. Yeah his first game first shift he goes out and he scores a goal so that's what they're looking for. Be that big body be that big presence just like Digby he can open up space on the inside for the rest of the offense especially Tyson Gibson and they're going to need that tonight. So the Riptide's opponent tonight San Diego has dropped their last two to the rush and also Halifax. They have one win this year, an overtime thriller at Vancouver. What have you made of San Diego's season this year? I talked to coach, uh, their assistant coach, Josh Sanderson, old teammate of mine, and he talked about this is the game they feel like if they can win this, they can start to go on a little bit of a run. They need to find that chemistry and get this offense working together. A lot of new pieces. Tonight's the night that he says they want to lock that in. There's the Denver product, Wesley Berg, coming off back-to-back 30-goal -back seasons. And also in the back, Brody Merrill had the game winner in overtime at Vancouver, a three-time transition player of the year. He, he is the ultimate captain. His brother's the coach of the team. He is the heart and soul of this team. He's the one that's going to motivate them to come together and play together. With the addition of Miles Jones, the Riptide look to get back in the win column before the bye week against the hungry San Diego team. The face-off from Uniondale is coming up next. A beautiful rendition of the National Anthem by Nina Calcara. And from NYCB Live, home of the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum tonight, it's East meeting West, San Diego against New York. Mitch, now take us through your keys to tonight's game. With this being a doubleheader, I actually like that in the beginning of the game if the Riptide can use that to propel them to an early lead. On the other side, the San Diego Seals, they need to keep those Riptide shooters outside. It worked for the Wings last night. If they can do that defensively, they're going to have success. 
Tonight is the debut of Miles Jones in this one. We're really looking forward to what he brings. He's a Long Island product, a two-time NCAA champion out of Duke in 2013 and 14. This is one of the most dynamic middies in the outdoor game, but tonight playing indoor, and he's been in training camp for Reggie Thorpe's team with Team USA. Yeah, and he's, he's been learning the game. I talked to him before the game. He's excited. He's gotten a look at what he needs to do, and, and don't discount his ability to feed the ball. He's not only a good scorer, but he also can distribute it, and that's something he scored 100 goals and 100 assists in his career. Let's send it down to Danny with Miles Jones. Danny. Miles, big night, making your debut in your hometown for the Riptide. What are you most looking forward to? Yeah, you know, just the opportunity to play, man. These guys are really special. You know, I've been around this group for the weekend now, and you know, it's it's been it's been awesome to just get to know these guys and, and learn the game. So I'm excited for that. Miles, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Danny. In addition to Jones activated tonight, Mike Manley, Jake Fox, and Ethan Shot. You see Alex Bouquet looking for a better night than he had last night in Philadelphia. But the big story on the opposite side is Nick Demude will be inside the cage for San Diego, making his third game played instead of Frank Isciliano, who is hurt. It will be Clellan in the middle with Waddell, who was great against Baptiste, and we're underway from Nassau Coliseum at the New York Riptide in the down, home down, down, of down, dark down. blue jerseys. And it's a New York team coming in at one and six, a tail end of a back-to-back -back after last night in Mitch, which was a great first half by New York on the road. Yeah, big credit to the Philadelphia Wings. Their defense made some adjustments, and they Riptide just weren't able to get on the inside and get good looks at the cage in that second half. They went on a bit of a run, and the Riptide just couldn't come back from that hole. Digby's running middle over the top shot there by Fox right away, but it was smothered there by Demude, who played against the Rush and also Toronto this year, but they're running the opposite way here, and an opening goal for San Diego. Right off the bat, they lead 1-0. Cam holding so dangerous in transition. you got to know that's coming. Nice little seal there by his teammate preventing the Riptide defenders from getting to the middle. And, and Cam Holding, he is deadly. It's only his second goal of the season, but he's a guy who's racked up the points over the years with his speed back in his, back in his time with Colorado. Mitch, you talked about this too, about goals in transition for the opponents, and there again, right away, San Diego delivering against Reggie Thorpe's team. Yeah, and Brendan, Brendan Clellan there did a nice job of sealing his man off. So. While the Riptide almost got back to get to two on two, it was it remained a two on one because of that smart play there in transition. And that's something that with Brody Merrill behind, you're, you're gonna get a lot of loose balls. Riptide are gonna have to key in on that and make sure they get back. A lot of loose balls last night against the Philadelphia Wings, especially in that first half, but also not forcing too many turnovers. Second, third chance opportunities as well for New York. It's right to Chetner over the top and just wide of Demude's cage. Skying up for the ball there was San Diego's McIntosh. New York has it back. Cross floor pass. Lucky for Lomas. Demude says no. Lomas is going to get it back, and now they'll reset at the top with Digby. San Diego's defense looks all out of sorts. They're running around. There's guys wide open on the inside. This is where New York has to capitalize on these looks. Here's Chetner again. Cross floor pass, and it finds the back of the cage. And we're level at one. Tyson Gibson with the equalizer. Dave, I say it time and time again. These cross crease passes are so difficult to defend. The goalie has to come out and play Jean-Luc Chetner there, then get all the way across. So as you're moving, it's hard to protect that five hole, and it's also hard to read where the ball's coming from. So great job there by the Riptide of getting the ball moving and making the most of that second chance opportunity they earned. Gibson had a terrific homestand. In fact, he was a player who had a hat trick in one of those games, also had two goals as well, had two assists, did not score last game against the Philadelphia Wings. Let's go downstairs to Danny with more on Jean-Luc Chetner. Off the field, guys, Jean-Luc Chetner is a chef. What you might not know is that he does most of the cooking for Tyson Bomberry, Jake Fox, and Connor Kelly, and that he learned from his parents helping in the kitchen. He watches YouTube videos, and he said he'd consider going to culinary school. Some of his top dishes, roast, chicken fettuccine, Caesar salad, that's his mom's recipe. And of course, Tyson Bomberry is his sous chef. Dave. Mitch, I feel like a chicken Caesar would be a good pregame meal for us before our broadcast. It's a shot from the top. It was a low-angle drive there by Casey Jackson, who's making his second 
start here for San Diego coming off of injury. And it's great to see Jackson back out there with the dangerous Wesley Bird in addition to Connor Fields. Yeah, as you mentioned, he was their leading scorer last year. So they're, they're welcoming him back after his first game was against Halifax. They're going to be looking to, for him to contribute quite a bit tonight. Behind the cage, it's Fox in a 360 move. Denied there by Merrill, the captain. We should mention as well, San Diego with a, a tough injury in Austin Stotts, and we hope Austin gets back really soon. They're expecting mid-February at San Diego. Last year, the rookie of the year in the NLL, 32 goals along with 29 assists. Yeah, he's another big part of that offense. I, I spoke with Josh Sanderson before the game, and he is... He said they're still trying to figure things out and get the chemistry with this offense because there's a lot of new pieces. Westberg coming over from Calgary. They've got Casey Jackson who just got back in the lineup. So they're really trying to find that balance of what's working and what's not. Possession here will belong to San Diego. Keep an eye on as well for Zach Greer has nine goals in his 10th year in the NLL. He had a hat trick last game against the dangerous Halifax team who in their expansion year starting off the season at 5-0. Here's Greer at the top here for San Diego in gray. Shot there denied by Bouquet. The players in front, Wagner helping out defensively towards the corner board. And we may get our first call of the night. There's a look at Alex Bouquet. Again, a terrific start, early part of games within the last three. If we go all the way back for the first time that this New York team played the wins, but Bouquet again wants to put together a collective 60-minute effort as a man is going into the box and Greer in a power play situation upcoming for New York. Yeah, Bouquet has been great when his defense is strong in front of him. Number That's 88 key. Two minor boarding. Mark Ardonio is our crew chief tonight. Greer is in the box and another look as to the penalty call here. And, and that was Ian Garrison. And, and you see Greer tries to come around and there's a power play goal. They make the most of it right away. This is what this is what I was talking about when it comes to being in that zone, being in that rhythm as you come to the second part of a back-to-back -back weekend. They played last night. They already know where each other are going to be on the floor. You can see this little behind-the-back flip right on the tape. Because of that, you're able to get right back into that flow of things while the Seals flew across country, had a practice. They got to try to get back up to game speed. So it was Connor Kelly delivering the power play just six seconds in on that man up. And the seventh goal this year for Kelly gives New York the early 2-1 lead. We haven't seen too many leads by New York as of late. And San Diego is a team that has been struggling in the first quarter of games. They did lead the NLL in shots per game, but in that first quarter, they're having a hard time scoring. And they want to right the ship here on the road. That's a good move inside by Wagner on the face dodge there. And a big hit by Wagner that time on Skikes. Fox battling towards the back door, but it's picked up here by San Diego cleanly, and they'll come the opposite way with their goal scorer and Cam Holding. Wagner has been an awesome boost for them in that transition game. He's physical, he's quick, and he can score goals. So he's going to be a player that they're going to look to for a long time to contribute on their uh, both their D and their offensive end. Behind the cage is Jackson. It goes into the netting off of a New York stick and will stay on this end. As we're a little more than four minutes into action, New York looking for their second win this year. Game number eight of the season for the New York Riptop. Jackson towards the right in front of the New York bench. Spinning around that time, Scott Johnson. It's Jackson still in possession. Feeding it over towards the corner board and looking for the rookie, Connor Fields. Here's those loose balls that Mitch has been talking about that New York's been good. And a great play by Scott Johnson to pick it up. And Rannigan has it in the middle of the floor. Nice defense on that three-man side. When you're coaching that, you say wall it up. You basically have a high man, a low man, and then a middle man. You create a wall. You don't let anyone penetrate so they can't set those picks. Great job of the riptide defense of forcing them to the outside, taking away all inside opportunities. Here's Digby on that seal on the right over to McCardle. That cross crease pass, but picked off in front by Bradley. And numbers the opposite way here for the Seals. Miles Jones out there, coming out of the D door. He's gonna get matched up about against Kyle Buchanan, who's a quick, shifty player, good support. That's a two-man game, but a great hit there by Ethan Sean in his first game, and a great outlet by Bouquet. Here's Ranigan, 1v1, Ranigan thinking left, but he's taken down right in front of the crease. Ranigan regains possession and scores! What work rate by John Rannigan. It's 3-1, Riptide. John Rannigan studying a little tape on Danny McRae there, trying to body up, loses the ball. What an effort 
to pick that back up. He tries to drive in, loses the ball. Nice little lift check, scoops it back up. What stick protection, rolls away, and bounces that up and out. I was a little worried that his knee went into the crease as he shot that, but I think it bounced in before he before he went into the crease there. What an effort by the assistant captain, who's excited to be back in the lineup tonight. He was disappointed to not play last night against Philadelphia, and he is making the most of that opportunity right now. And the first goal this year for Rannigan, and a big one that gives New York the two-goal advantage. Now a, a 3 nothing run here for New York over a span of three minutes and 57 wait, seconds. Wait, Terrific wait. start to this game. Just like they did after Philadelphia had the 2-0 lead last night, then New York went on a run of their own. Here's Belgrave. He'll come out on a change as San Diego's led by Patrick Merrill. It's a team last year who was terrific in their expansion season. In fact, Mitch, they finished second in the West. And Aaron shot there by Berg. He lost it in transition. It's Fields now this time. Big trail check there by Andrew Suter. He, he was beat underneath, but did a nice job of staying with the play, getting a little piece of Berg's stick as he went to shoot that. That will take us to our first timeout in the game. 9.05 to go in our first stanza. John Rannigan, a great time for his first goal this year, battling two, and he beats Tamu 3-1 Riptide back in a moment. The NLL on BR Live and MSG Plus is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. Youth lacrosse players in attendance tonight. Dave Lennon, Mitch Blyle, Danny Wexelman, our entire MSG crew. As New York's trying to improve to two and six on the young season in their expansion season in the NLL, battling a San Diego team coming in at one and five. New York is enjoying this three nothing run as Cam Holding got the scoring started early on. It was Kelly inside. He was looking for his second, but that's good, Mitch, right there, getting towards the middle and finding a player off his back shoulder. Yeah, both teams right now have given up a lot of opportunities on the inside, and right now neither have capitalized on those, but they defensively need to buckle down and push those players out to the outside. You see Miles Jones again down there in his second shift. Manley also out there defensively as well. It was Berg towards his right, and here's San Diego with another offensive possession. Pass Jones again. That time it was Fields, and Bouquet was there down to make the save. Jones and Fields, of course, played together this summer with the, with the chaos and the PLL, so he knows him well. Jones is going to come out here on a change, and you talked about this last night on the broadcast that you played against Jones, and just the physical presence that he brings on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. He's a big body. They don't have a ton of those. Wow, what a shot. They don't have a ton of those on the defensive end, so he's going to add that, especially with Tyson Bomberry out. He's going to add that physicality. Now it's just a matter of listening to his teammates to make sure he's in the right spots each time. Noble this time has it working up top there. It's Jeremy. He has six goals this year for San Diego. Gets the seal there by Riley. A good feed in the middle looking for Greer. And the Seals get one right back. Zach Greer, goal number 10 on the season. It's 3-2. What a handle by Zach Greer. He catches that under pressure. Nice little back door there. But a good job defensively of covering, but just continues to go with that pressure. And, and Cody Radswitz can't dislodge that ball. Hey. Strangely reminiscent, we hey. talked about this before the game. Zach Greer you know ended my hey, college career back in 2007 with, with, with the game-winning goal, three seconds left. Duke versus Cornell. He knows how to finish in tight spaces. Yeah. He's been doing it for 13 years plus. As you mentioned, first year with San Diego, the third overall pick in the 2009 entry draft. Suter just got banged up there a little bit, but he walks over towards the bench. Here's the captain, Merle. And up the floor it goes here for Buchanan, the assistant captain on this San Diego team. He comes in with four goals as well. 7-10 to go in the first, a 3-2 game. Dan McRae just a little too lazy with that stick. You cannot hang your stick when Brody Merrill is around. He is a surgeon. You can see it there. He took not just the ball, but the stick right out of Dan McRae's hands. Wesley Berg operating on the left-hand side over to Fields, the star-studded rookie. Jones on him, over towards his right. There's the stick judge there by Greer, back-to-back. -back. All of a sudden, we're level at three. And there's Zach Greer again. And this is Suter and, and Jones working together. They just got to get an understanding of where they're going to be, when to help and when not to. 
I think Suter is probably playing a little bit more support defense towards Miles Jones, but Miles did a great job on ball, so Suter maybe can hang off a little bit there, not give as much room. You can see him providing a little bit of low support, and by the time he gets back up to Zach Greer, Zach Greer does a nice job of just keeping that high. And a hat trick last game at Halifax. Last year, did not play in the NLL. Last with Colorado, where he had two goals and 23 assists. And now that's two goals to tie the game in a span of 44 seconds for the Seals. Bradley coming off the bench, has Fields operating on the right-hand side of Buchanan. They opt to go left this time, and Noble. Noble now running the middle. Suter marking him. It's Noble now with Bouquet standing his ground inside the cage. Behind the back, look, as they were searching inside for Riley, but that was tipped out in front by New York, and numbers the opposite way in transition here for Rannigan. But he'll opt to come off on a change. Seals' lone win was at Vancouver on a Merrill goal in overtime. And again, it's Dippy went low that time. Demut was not fooled. Again, if you're just joining us, Frank Shiliano's hurt, not starting tonight. Instead, it's Nick Demut playing at his third game this year in the NLL. He's a rookie that the Seals talked about. They want, they, they trust him. They want to, he has an opportunity now to. Casey Jackson bangs it home and gives the Seals the 4-3 lead and enjoying a 3-0 run. And Dave, this is just too easy right now. These are just Seals players cutting through the middle and catching passes. That can't happen. You need to be in front of your player. Westberg, too good of a feeder to just let him have his hands free as Casey Jackson just ball cuts right to the ball and catches it. That's three goals in a row where that's happened. Greer, Greer, and, and then right there, Coming again with Jackson. If you let those lefties cut to the right-handed side without getting in their face, they're going to catch that and they're going to finish. But Jackson, with his first goal in his second game played, had an assist last game against Halifax. In fact, this team in San Diego, we mentioned their 1-5 record, coming off that 8-5 loss at Halifax. Important to note, just those five goals in that game, they only had nine against the rush as well, but they're enjoying this early lead with five minutes to go in our first. McCardle will spark by one. Lomas over the top went wide at Demute's cage, but it scooped up there and a shot clock violation dumped in by Tyson Gibson. The Seals felt like they were right there in that Halifax game and Halifax playing as well as they are. So that was something that, you know, you never want to take moral victories, but that was one they felt like they could build on. And now they're looking to turn that next step and get a win here and try to string together a few and get back into things in the West Division. Buchanan thought right, still in possession, right around the cray. That cross crease pass, and in again, it's Jeremy Noble. 5 3 seals. Just that cross crease feed. Jeremy Noble goes up for it, almost like that alley oop look, and it just looks to me like the Riptide defense is out of sorts. They're letting players get too open, they're looking to support and that's allowing players to get right in the middle or right on the sides without even being touched. So this is an area where right now they got to work on their communication, get everyone on the same page and say, hey, let's just win our one-on-one -on -one matchups and we won't have to worry so much about these feeds. And now the Seals in the midst of a 4 nothing run over the last two minutes and 44 seconds. They have it in possession here once more. And again, they deliver again. Well, San Diego on the road has been clicking at the start past Bouquet. It's 6-3 and a 5-0 run for San Diego. Tor Reinhold, another dangerous player from Calgary, Alberta there. And just a, a really good offense there. And we're going to see a goalie change as they, as they bring in Goa Abrams. Second, maybe third time in this game, Mitch, again. Off of transition to get off an early face-off draw. And those goals are separating nine seconds from the Noble and Reinhold goals. Goa Abrams now replacing Alex Bouquet. Played a little over four minutes. Did not allow a goal last night. Just at some garbage time against the Wings. See how New York now responds. Remember, they went on a 3-0 run after Gibson, Kelly, and Rannigan got on the board. And an early chance here for Gobrecht. Gobrecht here towards his right with a bouncer into the netting. 
And that will take us to another timeout and a chance for New York to regroup. San Diego is getting the scoring started as of late, thanks to Zach Greer. Good stick judge here, and he beats Bouquet Vibal. 6-3 San Diego here in the first. San Diego in the midst of a 5-0 run, and they lead 6-3 with 4.17 to go in the first. Here's Danny with Reggie Thorpe. Danny. Coach, back-to-back -back games. It's early, but what's the key to stopping this run from the Seals right now? You know, I mean, they're well-rested. We knew they were going to come out flying there. 6-5 on five goals, so we got to tighten up our D, 5v5. Five five. Coach, thanks. Thank you. Dave. Thanks, Danny. Next weekend, the NLL Game of the Week moves to Las Vegas as Cotter Fields at the Seals host Dylan Ward at the Mammoth at Orleans Arena. Catch all the action on BR Live, Twitter, and Facebook starting at 9.30 Eastern with a special half-hour edition of NLL Game Day Live. Cage was open momentarily, but Abrams will go back in there between the pipes. New York in possession here. Mitch, they got to type it up defensively here against San Diego, in particular in the middle. Excellent move there. Yeah, they, they definitely need to work on their communication right now to make sure everyone's matched up and keep guys out of that dangerous area. That was a nice look there by Tyson Gibson. Just missed the cage. Those are the second chance opportunities that in the in the first half of the Wings game. That was giving them a shot. Here's Westberg on this left-hand side. Jackson setting those picks in. Also out there is Fields towards the right. Buchanan gets it back. Here's Berg on the left. Keep an eye on those back doors as well. Fields now towards that back door. The dunk opportunity does not go home there for Casey Jackson. Nice save by Abrams hugging his pipe there. One thing I've noticed, Dave, that the Seals, they will put a man behind an X. That really opens up things for cutters like Zach Greer. Oh, that's a goal. No. Fox there with an opportunity, Ooh. but it spills out there. Demude comes up clean for San Diego. That was one. I think it went off the uh, crossbar, then Demude's back, and then back out. So just missing Jake Fox, quarter of an inch the other direction. I'll tell you. We, we dissected this at our open for Fox playing just his second game this year. He's looked good with some early opportunities. He has, and, and the key for him is going to be consistency throughout the game. He's a big body. They just need him getting on and off the floor and moving his body quickly. Dunk again. It's Dylan Riley, but he comes up short that time. Transit transition here for Miles Jones. And Jones will see the offensive players come out, will come out. On a change here, it's McCardle on this right-hand side looking for Digby, trying to go low. Demute stands his ground, though, for San Diego. And Dave, for a rookie goalie to have an opportunity like this, this is how you get those reps in. This is how you get better. The goalie position is one that takes a lot of years to become the best, and so this is really big for Demute to, to get these reps in, play against high-caliber play, and when it matters most, which is early in the season. Getting's in there for Shiliato. It was Jackson who lost it. A good stick check there by Radzowitz. Also has a goal of the season this year. He's been great in transition, too. Wagner got hit into the boards there by Gobrecht here. They opt to go left this time in Kelly. Dodges past one man. Over to Lomas on the right-hand side. Serving his options towards the top, and it's just wide by Gibson. Six seconds to go, cross floor pass as they were looking again for Gibson. Tried for that last chance. There will be a shot clock violation here on New York, but still, Mitch, out of that last time out, some good looks for the Ripped. Yeah, Gibson is absolutely flying around out here. He keeps getting himself open. He's working really hard. Now he's just got to reward himself. Fields Noble out there. Also is Buchanan running middle. Also ready behind the cage. It's Berg with the seam. Berg with a bullet steam. McCray was in his way. Abrams picks it up. And here comes the captain, McCray, who had the game winner right here at Nassau Coliseum in overtime against Georgia. McCardle's on this right-hand side. We talked about him, that he needs to step up his game over the top shot there. It's off of Demude from Chetner and into the sandbar. Excellent shot there by Chetner. No one picked him up. He said, all right, I'll step in and take it. Cardle had an assist last game against the Wings. Here is Connor Kelly with a crease dive. His foot was in the crease, according to the officials. And we'll come back the opposite way here for San Diego and Merrill. Over the top that time to McIntosh. Bradley will run off on a change as well for San Diego with 35 seconds to go in our opening frame. What has been a terrific start for San Diego in the midst of this 5-0 run. 
Running middle there is Casey Jackson for San Diego. Again, a good dodge there by Fields. Knocked down by Chetner. Scooped up. Numbers the opposite way. And a chance for Radzowitz on a 2v1 with Wagner. Radzowitz gets the screen from Wagner shooting wide. Good Gibson back. now with 10 seconds to go. Good back up there by Gibson. They'll get one last look at it. They're going to pull their goalie and try to put something in here as Dan Lomas takes himself, gets that reset. On a six on five, but we may get a call, Mitch. A delayed penalty called here. And let's see as the officials are conferring with 1.8 seconds. We're getting a penalty shot here, Dave. They said under, under two minutes, if you send a player early, it's an automatic penalty shot. So because the player left early. San Diego, bench minor, illegal substitution, penalty shot. So another chance for the New York Riptide to get another back. The last goal scorer was Rannigan in the early go, and that made it 3-1. I, I need to correct myself. It was because the player was on a clear breakaway and they sent a player early. It wasn't because of uh, the under two minutes. That's just the end of the game. Either way, we get some penalty shot action. Always exciting. Tyson Gibson, the number one overall pick against Nick Damieu. And here comes Gibson. And it's stopped there by Demut. He wasn't full towards his left with 1.8 to go. And I think Gibson had him. Demut just flashed that big glove and got his bear paw on it. What a save there. He's playing lights out right now. Patrick Merrill and his coaching staff have to be really pleased, especially with Al Chiliato in the cage to get Demut robbing New York with multiple opportunities early. It was a slow start. We should mention that it was a 3-1 New York lead. But since this run by San Diego, it, it feels like they just got more comfortable as the game has gone along. Yeah, and you can chalk that up to defense when it's five on five, but it, when it's one on one with a goalie versus a player, that, that's all they needed there. And that will do it for our first quarter. San Diego in the midst of this colossal 5-0 run and halting the New York Riptide with Tyson Gibson on the penalty shot. The story so far, Nick Demut between the pipes after one. It's 6-3 San Diego. Start of the second quarter from NYCB Live, home of the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. San Diego up 6-3 over the New York Riptide. Watch all the action from around the National Lacrosse League this season on BR Live. Choose an annual, monthly, or per game pass. For more info, visit nll.com slash BR Live. Mitch, last night against Philadelphia, we talked about how this team can strengthen itself defensively. Moving forward in this game, how can they type it up in front of Abrams in goal for New York going into quarter number two? It's all about matching up and just playing better one-on-one, -on -one, frankly. It's, it's all off ball that this is happening because they're looking to support each other and they're looking a little too much. And San Diego has very effective cutters. Those cutters are timing up their cuts and their picks so that way they can find those seams and they're hitting them because they have players like Westberg and Zach Greer who can make that happen. Wagner with the bouncer now, Rannigan over to Radzowitz on the left, and our second stanza is underway from Uniondale. Here's Radzowitz now. Let's see if New York can get back in the scoring column here, and they're opening possession in the second. They have Digby operating on this left-hand side. They try to run middle, but it went behind Kelly, and it's scooped up there by Noble and company. It numbers the opposite way for a ferocious San Diego team in transition with holding to the left-hand side, looking for Greer. He has two tonight, and a kick save and a beauty there by Abrams. Yeah, that's a guy you don't want to leave open there. So this is that transition. They've got to key in on these dangerous scores. Let the defensive players, let him take that shot. Key in on 88. He's got two goals already tonight. As he tried to go five hole that time, but Abrams wasn't fooled. Chance here towards the middle. A good stick check, though, by McIntosh. McCardle salvages the possession there, but it's thrown away as Kelly couldn't cradle it and dumping it into the San Diego zone as the shot clock is getting set to expire. Now a chance the opposite way here for the Seals. Greer's running middle that time. Suter's pinned to him. A look at Buchanan there. Buchanan and Berg also out there. It's Greer opting to go right that time. Radigan saying no, a chance again to the middle. Again, it was Riley just peeling off that back shoulder of Radigan to the top. Now Buchanan will take a laser, but getting a piece was Abrams of New York.
Chance here again for San Diego, looking for Buchanan, has it towards his left ankle, and still in possession, marked there by Miles Jones, the Long Island product. Jones there, saw it go towards Wesley Berg, but it just went high and wide. Now, we're seeing a lot of defensive work by Miles Jones. What can fans expect him to produce on the offensive side for New Yorkers? That's just not his role with this team. I think not yet, Dave, and that takes so much time and, and so much coordination to, to figure that role out. I think defensively, you can make a few more mistakes. There we go. Tyson Gibson gets back another his second goal tonight. It's 6-4. So expect eventually for him to be in there, but it's going to take some time. He's got to practice. He's got to understand exactly what to do on the offensive end, whereas defensively, it, it certainly takes coordination and, and communication, but a lot you can get by it with a little bit more athleticism, which he's got by the buckets. That's a great seal there by Kelly and through traffic. And, and Mitch, you called for some more screens being set on some shots from the outside. Teams have been doing a great job against this New York team. Let's go downstairs with more. Here's Danny. Guys, we know that Tyson's dad is Daryl, the assistant coach for New England. And Tyson told me earlier this week they actually work so close together that they get lunch one to two times a week. They eat together, they talk about life, they talk about the game, and it's pretty cool. He said his mom actually influenced everything else in his life besides lacrosse. Dave? Thanks, Danny. First goal for New York in nearly 12 minutes. Aaron shot there by Kelly from the outside again. And here come the Seals, up by two on the road with Gobrecht. They opt to go left, he heads this time. Now towards the right, it's Reinhold, who also has a goal tonight, but went wide and picked up towards the quarter board by Buchanan. Dave, it looks like the Riptide are sinking back, not into a zone, but, but really trying to tighten up that inside and force these San Diego players to the outside. Over and back call will be one here by Suter towards Demude. Suter got checked there hard towards the left crease. It's a good hit by Glossini of San Diego. He'll come off but a chains, and Jackson has it up the floor. Mitch, you were a defender as well and a stalwart at that. So when you see this team peeling off that top of the zone, is New York just trying to bunker down in the middle towards Abrams, like you're saying, as opposed to giving up the wings? Yeah, it looks like Abrams, it looks like Abrams is seeing the ball well. He's made the saves since he's come in, other than the ones that, that have been impossible. And so they want to challenge these San Diego shooters to shoot from the outside. Also, all the goals are coming from cuts to the inside. So by packing it in, it makes cutting through the middle very difficult. Talk about cutting to the middle, it's Digby, but officials make a call to an illegal pick off the ball. It will not count there for Digby. We play on here at Nassau Coliseum. Here's Holding, who also has a goal tonight for San Diego. Man to man, here's New York defensively. Fields now, dodging to his right, marked by two. Fox with a help side defense. Oh, and it goes off the pipe there by San Diego, by Buchanan. Quick change, Rannigan comes off. Numbers the opposite way here for New York. Gibson has it towards his left. He has two goals tonight. Look for the two-man game. Man out the front door there is Lomas. On the right-hand side, Chetner. Got the seal there from Lomas there. Chetner still in possession for New York. Chetner back to Lomas at the top. Clellan with the stick check that time. Fox went up, and it's gobbled up here by San Diego. I'll tell you, Mitch, this San Diego team in transition, I know they halted the play that time to get their offensive players out there by Noble, but like we saw from Georgia and Philadelphia, they've been very quick in transition, and it's worked for them so far. Jackson was looking for that two-man game with Greer. They opt to go left. There was a seam open there, and it just goes into the netting there. It was Wesley Berg with the opportunity. Will take us to our first timeout in the second quarter. Boy, the New York Riptide are getting a lot of production in the rookie season by the number one overall pick, Tyson Gibson. Not one, but two goals tonight. It brings us to a two-goal game in New York. Five minutes have gone by in our second quarter in 6-4 San Diego. Downstairs, Danny with Patrick Merrill of San Diego. Danny. Coach, while the Riptide were playing Philadelphia last night, your team was presumably eating some dinner when you guys were here. But you've got your number two in net. You've got the lead. You guys look like they're playing without any fear. No, I think we're playing aggressively. That was part of our game plan. I mean, we knew how hard they work. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we, and we watched their game last night against Philadelphia at the hotel. And, you know, we're hoping to jump on them early. But we know it's going to be a 60-minute battle. 
Coach, thank you. Thank you. And also Dave. as his brother, thanks Danny, Brody Merrill out there, the Georgetown product of three-time transition player of the year in his second year with the San Diego team. And, of course, had that game winner and the lone win of the year against Vancouver. And a look at Miles Jones as well in his debut has gotten a lot of time at the start of this game as McCardell gets hit hard into the boards. Yeah, and I played with Patty Merrill back for the New York Titans when they were the Titans. So I, I, I know what kind of competitor Patty Merrill is. He's a, he's a great guy leading that team. And having his brother on the team has got to be something special there. Played with the Titans 08 and 09. Also a longtime player for the Toronto Rock. Lomas feeds it down low. He was looking for Connor Kelly. And again, Demute has been strong at the start. Here for San Diego on the road. How about the travel? that San Diego has to do this year. We were looking at all the miles that they have to log prior to this game, Mitch. And I was trying to figure out maps to figure out what the, what the latitude. They have not been south of Buffalo. Everything has been has been Halifax and Toronto. They're way up north. So this is the first time they come a little bit south, other than when they're at home in San Diego and uh, half, almost, almost down in Mexico. Dug up there by Riley. Again, coming off that game against Halifax. A good hard hit there by Fox. Officials will stop playing. Stay, still will be possession here with San Diego. That was, I think that was Ethan's shot. That's his second big hit of the game. So he's a new addition to the lineup, signed on the practice roster last week, and then they brought him in tonight. So he's making his presence known with his shoulders. Yeah, it was a good call by you. And shot last year, played with San Diego. So doing our research, our team has found the closest opponent, maybe Vancouver, in the NLL for San Diego. Doing a lot of traveling, and it's a straight north trek for the Seals team looking for their second win this year. It's McCardle towards the top here. McCardle trying to go five ball past Merrill, but Brody had other ideas uh, for the Seals. And up the floor they come on a 2v2 situation. Here with Glassini. He'll come off on a change, though, and will give way in transition. Glassini is another one of those American guys that they're trying to normalize to the box. He's a Yaley, so I'm sure he's got the head for understanding it pretty quickly. Had a great summer with the chaos as well in the PLL. And, and he's a guy that multiple people just talked about how much he brings to a team in terms of character, in terms of his effort, always going 100%. If you check out YouTube, he's soaked about 15 shots in the back. Next week of the San Diego Seals are making history at hosting the Colorado Mammoth for the first NLO game to be played in Las Vegas. For more info, visit sealslax.com slash Vegas. Uh, more on that coming up at the break as our Devin Caney sat down with the Seals. And another goal here for Tyler Digby. It's a one-goal game. Digby with the wow goals this weekend. He had that one against the wings, the short side bouncer. Now he goes far side just off of his defender's back. That ball had eyes. Little hitch. Wraps that around on Cam Holding. Cam Holding couldn't have been in much better of a position. Digby actually, you watch as he pushes off, he extends his arms all the way around and just lets the stick do the work. You hear Canadians say the stick has eyes. You might not be able to see that corner, but you reach a stick out the top of the head. That sees that far corner, and he buries it in there. 11th goal for Digby. Had a pair last night in Philly. Merrill will come off on a change. Reinhold also out there as well. They'll come off into the Patrick Merrill bench. And here's the Seals seeing New York in the midst of a 2-0 run here. Greer out there running middle and setting these screens for Jackson towards the top. That low angle shot, but Abrams was not fooled. Again, Abrams in goal. Bouquet started. No goals allowed here by Abrams since he has come into the game. Manley up the floor, who didn't play last night. Great to see Manley back out there. As far as some transactions, New York released Anthony Patterson for the practice squad. They moved Logboat, Jonathan, and Pallas to the practice squad as well. Jonathan, Pallas, and Logboat played last night in Philadelphia. We're going to get a delayed penalty call coming up here. And it looks like it's going to come against New York as Reinhold has it in possession over to Buchanan for San Diego, up by a goal. Jake Fox was just looking to play a little physical there. He, he hit a player who had his head down. I think they're probably going to call him for hitting a defenseless player. 
New York just needs a touch here with the cage open on a 6v5 here. Fields thought about it. Over there to Jackson on that right-hand side. It's touched up by New York Suter. And we'll get the call. It'll be a man-up situation upcoming for the Seals. New York number 45, a two-minute minor illegal body check. You see Jake Fox, he, he knew. He, he hopped right over the boards. He knew what was happening. One of those where you, you want to be physical on every loose ball, but at the same time, if the player doesn't have his head up or if you, if you can't see his numbers, that's going to get called every time. So they called him for an illegal body check there. And he's going to sit in the box. That hurts. It hurts to get those penalties when you're on offense. So the San Diego team has been uh, strong on the power play this year at 42%. That's good for eighth in the NLL. Last are the riptide in penalty kill situations here. That hit a stick by Suter again. Fields was looking the opposite way down the middle that time, but he can't find his teammate. Abrams has it. In fact, Abrams tonight has 12 saves as Fox is inside the penalty box and shorthanded here are New York with McRae will come off on a change. New York getting a little shorthanded. Offense going last night against the Wings. They scored a, a shorthanded goal. That was a big boost for them. Another opportunity here that would tie the game right up. Gibson trying to get this one off the boards, looking for Digby on that set play off the training ground and coming back the opposite way. On the man advantage is Merrill at the front door. He'll get it back on the give and go here with Noble. And San Diego will reset with a minute to go with the man up. And Suter, Suter was jogging back casually there, thinking we're man down, they're not going to take it. San Diego said, if you're not going to pick us up, we're going to go right to the cage there. Here's Greer on the right, has Fields down low. Greer, they're either playing in the box defensively. It doesn't work out, though, as Buchanan scores in a power play goal for San Diego. It's their first goal in the second frame, and it's 7-5 seals. Kyle Buchanan, he's the one constant that the Seals have had on offense. He is kind of the, was the face of the franchise. You can see they, they set that little, it's a, an up pick and a down pick, almost creating that, that parting of the Red Seas for him to come around. That's a play we run with our seventh and eighth graders with a lot of success in our, our box team here in New Jersey, the NJ Sixers. Mitch, how are you aware, though, of that spatial awareness when you're sitting with four in the box playing zone there on a penalty kill situation? It, it comes from the far side, needs to communicate that those picks are coming, and then you do everything you can to fight around those picks to the inside to try to work through them and so you can get a piece of, of Buchanan before he gets that clean shot off. Seven five seals here with 420 to go in our first half. It's Jackson on the right. Casey going in when right at goal. Thought he was going to Greer that time, but Abrams wasn't full. Here's Radzowitz again on a 1v2. Man coming out of the front door for New York as well towards the right hand side. It was Jean-Luc Chetner. Radzowitz again over to Kelly. Chetner's got his bombs up. He didn't like it. Looked like he was getting held as he tried to cut through there. He's saying to the ref, what the heck? Low angle shot there. It was denied in front as it went wide. Picked up there by Glossini as he rolled it down the length of the floor. It'll be scooped up here by Goa Abrams. Big crunch there on Brody Merrill. He's a he's a big body. He takes he's taken hits for years and years and, and always seems to find a way to pop right back up. 2006 Defensive Player of the Year as well in this league. It's Gibson. Peeling around towards his right at Lomas towards his left. Oxford Digby here over the top shot by Chetner is wide of debut. And here's Fox. Fox now back crease dive. Gibson well wide. Picked up by Chetner over the top shot and hit the bar and into the crowd. And, and that's a best case scenario. Jake Fox was in the crease, hitting the pipe and getting that ball back. That's best case right there. They'll take us to a timeout with 317 to go in our first half. Uh, New York on a 2-1 run and made it a two-goal game. 3.17 to go in our first half. The Seals up by two over New York and coming up on NLL at the half. Seals and Mammoth will make history when they play the first ever game in Vegas, plus highlights and analysis of our first half of play. Stay with us for NLL at the half. In fact, part of our week nine schedule last night was the lone game on that Friday night as this New York team fell to Philadelphia. The Wings have been such off to a hot start. What are three games tonight? Buffalo at Colorado, Halifax at Calgary. Tomorrow, Georgia is taking on New England. The Swarm have lost their last three of the crease dive there by Gibson went wide. Still possession maintained here by New York. Oh, Gibson, he was wide open for about six seconds. They just didn't see him. 
But because of that, they drew a penalty, and now they're going to be man up. Abrams came off the floor, a 6 on 5 here on the delayed call against San Diego. They have Gibson up to the left, Shetner looking inside for Digby. There's the touch by Reidhold, but it will be a power play upcoming for New York. And we'll get the call by Gardonio. San Diego, number 12. Two minutes, checking from behind. And skies will go in the box. This New York team is one for one on power plays tonight. Let's see if they can add another here on oh, the man advantage. Down by two. Digby running the middle here. Over to Kelly to the right hand side. Shutner over the top and through the wickets of Mood. And a power play goal. They're two for two on power plays tonight. It's 7 6. The chef is cooking. I love the confidence of Jean Luc Chetner there. He sees the opening, he sees him step, he finds that five hole, and he buries it. Just squeaks that through, Demute's likes there. And Chetner's a guy that I feel like has gotten more and more confident as the year has gone on. He's not afraid to take those shots, and having a young player who has that confidence, that's huge for a team like this, where sometimes you just need a spark, and. You know, you might you might live and die by the sword, but but ultimately you got to take those chances. Ooh. First power play goal was scored in six seconds by Kelly. The second in just a nine second span. Reinhold thought about it, but will come off here on a change as McRae spilled towards the floor with 2:13 to go in our second quarter. Back down to a one goal game. Fields on this right-hand side. Thought about it momentarily over to Greer looking for the hat trick, and Abrams slid perfectly towards his right. Yeah, Abrams is on right now, and he's getting an opportunity here to earn a spot out there, and he's, he's doing everything he can to make sure that he's cementing his spot between the pipes. Yeah, you're right on that, as Buchanan had the goal that made it 7-5, and that was the first goal scored by San Diego in a span of nearly 15 minutes, 12 saves before that by Abrams. Digby over to Kelly this time. Towards the right on that diagonal pass, they feed Digby again. He opts to go to the left-hand side. A good dodge there. Digby over the top and wide. Kelly trying to scoop this up towards the quarter board, not before shot clock violation on New York. Digby trying to use that big size, like almost like a post up there. Find the weakness in the defender, roll around that. That seems to be his patent move, Mitch. He's got great hands inside. He's got that big man body. So if he can use that backside to create his own space, it's going to give opportunities for him to get those, those silky mitts in front of the goal. Ooh. Oh, Buchanan was open on that back pipe, but couldn't cradle it for San Diego. Fields going for it towards the quarter. Radzowitz helping out, so is Johnston. And we're going to get a call here against San Diego. We'll come back to New York. And the refs are going to say that the first player to make a play on the ball ran through the crease. So you, you can run through the crease, but you can't be the first one to make a play on the ball in your offensive end. For a minute to go here at our first half, Wagner will come off on a change. New York getting set and looking to level this one down. Chetner again over the top, back to back. It's seven all. If you smell what the Jean-Luc is cooking. <laughs> Those outside shots have been working all season long for Jean-Luc Chetner again and got the seal there from Digby. I was just going to say that, and, and it's more of that middle distance. And, and, you know, you see the long shot from just inside the line. He's a couple steps in. That mid-range shot is so difficult for goalies, especially when you bounce it, because you're not sure where the bounces come from. And a lot of times that's a, through a screen or two. So it can be very difficult to read for goalies. And that's something that's been working really well. And now we're going to have a delayed penalty against the Riptide. Shot again, took another shot at a San Diego player. Look at a six on five as Demude comes out and onto the Patrick Merrill bench. Fields is out there with Greer, so is Noble running middle. It's Noble this time over to the left. That crossbar pass looking for Jackson off the pipe. Abrams got just a piece, and it's touched up there by Suter. But just like last night, Mitch, at the tail end of the first half, it's going to be a man advantage for the opposition in favor of San Diego tonight, as it looks like shot is going towards the box. New York's number 44, two-minute minor holding. Pat Merrill wants to bring his boys together and draw something up here at the end. So that'll give the New York defense time to regroup. 
Let's take a look at the East standings here. New England is off to a terrific 4-0 start to this season. How about the Philadelphia Wings from last year getting four wins? They played a lot of close games last year, but now they already surpassed that total this year. The Swarm have lost their last three, and the Riptide looking for their second win of the 2020 season. As far as the West goes, the Rush are very tight there with the Mammoth. The Roughnecks coming at two and three, and Vancouver's played in some tight games as well this year. This is anybody's division. You look at this, the best team is three and two, the worst is one and five. The Seals get a win here tonight, and they're right back in the mix. They're only a game and a half behind. So this, this Western division is gonna be a fun one to watch as we get into the second half of the season. Colorado's been getting a lot of production out of Ryan Lee. Came into the weekend second in the NLL in points, along with Jacob Rue. What a power play. Here is San Diego with Greer on the right-hand side. Over to Jackson, cross for pass as they were looking there for Buchanan. Wagner all over him. Here's Berg towards the top low angle shot, and Abrams got just a piece. As the horn will sound, it will take us towards halftime. What a seven, save seven there. here at the break and how about the play of Goa Abrams coming in for Bouquet who started this game yeah he's only gotten a few looks at the field earlier this this year and for him to come in he has been playing lights out it seems like he's anticipating their shots which is key let's go downstairs to Danny Wexelman John Luke back-to-back -back goals to tie the game heading into the half how do you maintain that momentum when you come out for the second half yeah we played last night uh, we just kind of tried to come out and play our own game without much scout so Go has done a great job coming in. We'll just try and keep the momentum going. John Luke, thank you. Thanks. Dave. Thanks, Danny. At one point, it was a 5 nothing run for San Diego as they were up 6-3. New York has stormed back thanks to Gibson and Chetner with two goals apiece. 7-7 seven, seven game at the end of 30 minutes. NLL at the half from New York is coming up next. Welcome to NOL at the half as we're level at seven between San Diego and New York. The Seals and Mammoth will make history when they play the first ever NLL game in Vegas next Saturday night. Our very own Devin Caney sat down with both teams to find out how Vegas became a lacrosse destination. We talked about you know LA, we talked about a game in, uh, in Anaheim, we talked about other market opportunities and Vegas came up, it jolted the conversation that we wanted to have about uh, you know a game outside the marketplace. It's definitely going to be a, like a monumental event, it's going to be something that you know that I think we're all going to remember forever, just being a part of it in that environment, in that, in that city. Vegas on Super Bowl weekend being one of the most popular destinations uh, for sports fans, we thought that would be a really cool opportunity and uh, so that was where the idea was born. I mean, it's the first professional lacrosse game, indoor lacrosse game to be played in Vegas. It's, it's one that kind of jumps out at the schedule for you. I don't think I've ever even thought about uh, a pro game in Vegas. And I think fans are going to love it, and then Vegas might turn into loving it too. It'll be a pretty cool feeling just to be the first team to ever play there. And, you know, if there's ever expansion or a team that comes there full time, to you know that we were kind of the ones to kick started to be a cool feeling. and. Uh, just the opportunity to kind of go down to Vegas and, uh, you know, play in an environment that I'm sure will be pretty wild down there. It'll be, uh, be a lot of fun. They're, they're, they're pushing the envelope, right, and trying to uh, do things that haven't been done in this league. And, you know, you're, you're, you're making ground, right, and, and you're creating, uh, you know, some buzz and excitement around the league. Have the opportunity to play there. I think it's something that's pretty cool, pretty special, and, and something that once maybe a couple years down the road after everything's done, kind of look back and, and think about it. It'll be something that, yeah, I mean, I'll kind of reminisce on and, and talk about. Unique experience for everybody, both teams. Um, it's going to be a heated game against Colorado, so we're excited. At the end of the day, it's, a, it's another lacrosse game. It's a, an opportunity for us to get a, get a win. I asked that we play Colorado because I thought uh, what a great opportunity. We're about halfway in between 
You know, Vegas is halfway in between Colorado and San Diego. The best players in the world don't get distracted. You know, they focus on them, they control the controllables, and they just move forward. And I think for young guys, that's, you know, a difficult task. I remember my first game in Colorado, and, you know, you look up, it's the big stage. And um, at the end of the day, you just have to go and execute your role and make that your priority and focus. We're excited to, to be there. Um, we're excited to have a good game, but we're going to treat it like, uh, yeah, I mean, any other game and make sure that we're prepared and hopefully we can get the win and then celebrate after. It had some level of significance. It has a lot of significance for me personally, but at the end of the day, it wasn't about that. It was about the fact that this really made a ton of sense for a Western Division uh, a matchup in, in Las Vegas and trying to get a lot of people in the National Lacrosse League to come join us for a big party. Welcome back to NLL at the half. We're all square between San Diego and New York. Welcome back atop Nassau Coliseum with Mitch Belisle. I'm Dave Leto. Mitch, we're deadlock and loose balls. And New York ended that first half with a 4-1 run. Yeah, that was huge for them. John Luke Chetner sparking them with two of those four goals. And that's what they needed. They got down a little bit. It felt like the whole world was crashing down. And then they bounced back in that second quarter. As we take a look at the first half highlights, we see that San Diego got off to a very clean start in this matchup. But New York as well tried to thwart that early surge. Yeah, they came out hot. And that was one thing. You are in that rhythm. You're in that flow on the, on the back half of a two-game weekend. You can see the behind-the-back passing was smooth. But then the San Diego Seals, they utilize their skill, they utilize their transition. John Rannigan put the team on his back with this one, but the Seals were just too much and, and, and capitalized uh, on some, some just some soft defensive play by the Riptide. The, the Riptide weren't able to match up inside, and since then, they've really tightened things up. Zach Greer had back-to-back -back for San Diego. He has been a force on offense for that. Lellett also has been big on faceoffs along with Woodall as Reinhold had the goal there. And then Bouquet was replaced just like garbage time last night. Abrams has been strong since he's come in. Yeah, he's a big body, and you know what? He's really patient. He's not over overstepping the saves. You can see him waiting out the shooters, and his big body is able to make those saves. So he's been huge. They've only scored one since he's come in. You can see it was this one on the power play, and that's that's about all you can ask for. Let's take a look at the first half totals here, plus seven in shots for San Diego. We mentioned at the loose balls, we are deadlocked at 36 and plus five in faceoffs. We mentioned the play of Alex Woodall all season has been superb. Yeah, and it's not just him versus the other faceoff man. It's that full five-man ball team, as any coach will tell you. So that's been great to see. They've been able to spark opportunity and cut off runs at the faceoff dot. So after a lackluster first quarter for New York, they were much improved in the second. Right along with us at NYCB Live, start of the third quarter coming up after these words. The NLL on BR Live and MSG Plus is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car shorts. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. Right on down Merrick Avenue heading towards Nassau Coliseum as we're getting ready for the start of the third quarter from Uniondale. It's seven all between San Diego and New York. Two teams looking for their second wins of the young NLL season. And Mitch, you want to see this New York team typing up defensively. We've mentioned not forcing too many turnovers. It's been even on the loose balls, but how can this team be even more productive in front of the cage of Goa Abrams? Yeah, I think what they've done is they've dropped into this very tight house. It's almost like a zone. And they're, excuse me, they're daring the Seals to get to the middle through this tight packed house. So I really like what happened and, and in the second quarter, and I think they gotta continue that and continue to pack that inside zone, force the outside shots. So New England is one of the unbeatens in the NLL along with Halifax. Philly has won now five of its last six. They have been superb under Paul Day. It's a Georgia team we've mentioned, led by Shane Jackson and Randy Stotts, and of course Stotts' brother Austin injured for this San Diego team, but expected to rejoin the Seals. And for their cross-country trek coming out of the locker room, it's been a strong start by San Diego, but that second quarter, 
give it towards the New York Riptide, though. They played much better. Yeah, this has really been the story of the Riptide season, that each quarter is like a completely different team, right? They come out and they play their best lacrosse, and then they play their worst lacrosse. So they need to find that a little bit more steady in the middle where they're not giving up huge runs and then having to have huge runs to come back into things. So hopefully this second half, they're able to, to start putting together a complete effort. What have you made of Miles Jones through one half of play so far? It's a learning process. I, I've been impressed with his one-on-one -on -one play, but it comes down to understanding the, the picks, the re-picks, and switching through that, talking through that, and that's going to take time. So I, so far, I think, you know, it's, it's right about where I expected. He's made some mistakes. He's played really well in certain aspects, and he's just going to have to continue learning. Jones making his debut, the two-time NCAA champion from Duke in Huntington, in New York product. Making his debut tonight for the New York Riptop. Getting a little smelling salts going there. One of the trainers brought up, well, they don't, they don't actually, smelling salts don't really do anything. <laughs> and one of the owners we were talking to, he said, it doesn't matter. It, 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 it's like that placebo effect. It gets them going. What all wins the opening draw to our second half pass. Clellan, a big hit towards the boards by Eli Gobrecht. And we're underway here in the third, deadlocked at seven. Again, this New York team ended the first half on a 4-1 run. At one point in the game, it was a 5-0 run by San Diego. Talk about Eli Gobrecht out there, Ithaca, New York native, uh, home to my parents now. Home of Cornell, obviously, but good to see Ithaca, New York on the map out here on the NLL game. What's going on here, Mitch, is it's supposed to be a power play. A shot's in the box. Should be about a minute 30 left. The yeah, shot went in with about 19 seconds left on the clock. So he, he will stay in the penalty box. They put it back up, and now it's as it should look. In a 7-7 game, Hirsberg has been quiet in the first half. A play, dunk opportunity. Abram says no, a foot was in the crease there by Buchanan. And that, to me, looked like they scouted that out in the film that they watched. They knew that was coming, and, and Abram's great job hugging that pipe and getting over there quickly. Yeah, Jackson was the one that was behind the cage of that back door. It's Chet Nerdale over the top here for Lomas as New York is trying to regain the lead. Here at home and looking for their second win of the season. McCardle spills it towards the left-hand side as Chetner's running middle here. Down the looking for Lomas, but he was tightly marked there by Tor Reinhold. It will be a shot clock violation on the rip top. And a unique look there. They went with three lefties and one righty. Typically, you see teams try to balance that with two and two, but they went with that three and one stack, maybe trying to give Tyson Gibson a look at a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Noble and Berg out there. It is Buchanan running middle. Here is Berg on the left there of Goa Abrams. Noble again gets it back on the return behind the back on the flip side here to Buchanan. Down low again, looking for Noble towards the top here. Inside again, and it's Wes Berg getting on the board. And the Seals regain the lead at Nassau Coliseum. And you mentioned Westberg, I feel like he has had a ton of opportunities this game. It just hasn't buried. Make no mistake, when he's in front of the cage from about three feet out, he's going to bury that one. And just does a nice job of quickly moving that. So we win the biz call a quick stick. We mentioned that uh, he was really quiet in that first half of play, but getting towards the middle of the crease, which we should mention that New York has done a, a better job bunkering in, if you will, defensively in front of Goa Abrams. Nonetheless, another tally for the Seals. It's an 8-7 game. Yeah, the only goals that the Seals have scored have been power play against Goa Abrams. Chance the opposite way on a breakaway with Clellan, and he scores! Back-to-back back for San Diego certainly does. It's 9-7 San Diego. And that is just a case of missing a matchup there. Abrams has been so huge. The only goals they've scored is when they've given guys wide open looks. There's another example of that. It, it, on that ball team, that face-off, you have to match up with the deepest player in your zone. And they just got caught running up and trying to make a play on the ball, and no one picked up back there. As Clellan buries the biscuit. First goal of the year for Clellan as he takes the face-off draw. One by Whittle. Those goals separated by nine seconds. Here's Suter going right on frame. But not full is Nick Demude. We should also mention, Mitch, that Connor Kiernan 
is the backup goaltender tonight with Shiliano out. Why is that? Yeah, kind of a, a weird situation where they weren't able to process the movement of their, their third string goalie into that backup role through the league fast enough. So what happens is you can either then dress a field player or a forward or a defenseman as a goalie, or you can play one goalie with 19 runners. They, or I'm sorry, uh, with 18 runners. They opted to dress uh, Kiernan. Dress, sorry, yep. dress Kiernan yep. as a goalie, and, and you can see him there. And the Brooklyn Redmen, they tweeted out he was getting reps in at a uh, youth <laughs> practice, kind of hop between the pipes as a joke. Little did he know he'd actually be potentially going in net. But talk about taking one for the team. Here's Fields there. Here's Berg around one man in Radigan. West Berg trying to go back to back. It's high and wide of the crossbar. Shot making his debut for New York last year. Play with San Diego. And there's a look at Connor Kiernan as five goals as an outfielder player with two assists and a big hit there by Miles Jones against Gobrecht. I think Gobrecht is saying welcome to the league. Yeah, right. yeah, Jones is going to come off there. Kiernan's in his second year with San Diego. Out of Canisius. A little bit of a homecoming for him. Goal scorer for Canisius. Yes. Not, not backup goalie, right. goal scorer. Here's Buchanan with a good face dodge there inside. It was Johnson helping out on that weak side for New York. Wagner towards the quarter board, battling there with Graydon Bradley of San Diego. The officials will hold play there as the ball doesn't get dislodged. It will stay on this end of the floor. And that's a killer. They called him for trapping the ball there. When there's two, three seconds left, you just want to keep kicking that ball around so no one can pick it up, let the shot clock expire and get that ball back. That, that is a, that's a tough blow for the Riptide defense, who's already pretty tired. Buchanan that time fed the middle to Greer, who has a pair of goals tonight, along with Chetner and Gibson for the New York side. But San Diego enjoying this 2-0 run here to start the third. Manley, excellent check there. He's a state trooper. That was disarming the suspect right there. <laughs> That's over skies that time. Chetner gets the seal by Lomas. Dodging towards his right on this two-man game with Lomas over the top. Went back door this time for Gibson. Goes for the duck opportunity, but Amude was not fooled. McIntosh now. He wants to get rid of that ball. You can see him looking for teammates. <laughs> that's, that's how I was. As soon as I cross over midline, I was just hit the panic button and find somebody open to get rid of the ball. He quickly got off the floor, and here's Berg with the goal here in this third. That diagonal pass over to the right-hand side. It goes wide by Fields, picked up by Jones. Here's Miles, lost it, though, on the stick check. Regained here by Buchanan and San Diego. Right to the middle on this three-on-one, and there's the crease dive there. Foot was in the crease, but Abrams does his job nonetheless. And Dave, Miles Jones, he, he turns the ball over there. He needs to immediately drop back in the hole a little bit quicker. And that just that's one of those things that comes with experience. Just understanding right away, okay, the ball transition. I need to get back and play D. And now we've got to speak of transition. Three another on three on one. Buchanan, Glassini trying to pick up another foot was in the crease. Back to back three on one opportunities there by the Seals. Yeah, this is a frantic pace right now. I think the Riptide want to settle this down, get their offense in. Let Chetner continue to work, get McCardle involved in this offense. Here's McCardle, as you caught on on that right-hand side. The seal by Chetner. Kelly's also out there on the left, playing with Digby. Chetner feeds it off to the right in McCardle. McCardle jetting towards his left inside for Digby as a goal tonight. Checked hard there by Cleland and company. Picked up by Cam Holding, who had the opening goal tonight. Dodging around one man, and Kelly regains his footing. Over to the captain, Brody Merrill, as he'll give way to Noble. Nobles on this left, marked by Rannigan on the high wing here on this left-hand side. Rannigan on those stick checks, though, negating Nobles' progress. He opts to go right-hand side on the jab step. There's the shot, and it's in for Casey Jackson. He adds another into his account this evening, his second of the game, 10-7 seals. And I think the Riptide have gotten a little bit away from dropping into that five-man house, that, that tight, packed zone defense. See, Rannigan gets pulled up a little bit high. That opens up that soft spot, that seam. Nice job there with a little feed by Noble over to Casey Jackson, and Casey Jackson makes him pay. So I would like to see the Riptide drop back again, keep forcing those outside shots as Abrams eat, eating those up. Welcome back, Casey Jackson, who played last game against Halifax, and he's been delivering tonight for Patrick Merrill's team. And just like that, this 3-0 run has been continuing to hurt this New York team in the game. That 3-0 run over a span of four minutes plus. 
here for San Diego on the road. And the errant pass from Lomas flies into the bench of the Seals. And that will take us to a timeout with 9.05 to go in the third. Casey Jackson, welcome back at 63 points last year. Healthy and scoring for the Seals. And 9.05 to go in the third, 10-7 San Diego with the lead. If you love the NLL, you'll love all the highlights on our social channels. Get the best goal, saves in action during the games and during the week on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and NLL.com. Welcome, Express Lacrosse Club in the house tonight at Nassau Coliseum. But Mitch, the San Diego team enjoying this 3-0 run on goals by Berg, Clellan, and Jackson with his second. That's a good stick check there in numbers the opposite way. Here coming down, Suter, and he's robbed there by Demude. Suits nice helicopter takeaway check there. I think he was worried someone was going to catch him. Suits and I played way back in the day in Minnesota, so he'd be uh, okay with me saying he's an old guy like me. He turned on the Jets there, went full speed, and just a big save by Demure. The first team All-Pro player with Minnesota, in fact, in 2012. There's a good feed for Greer. He has the hat trick tonight for the Seals. A 4-0 run for San Diego, and the Hattie there for Zach Greer. You give him a tiny little inch, and he's going to turn that into a goal. You can see Mike Manley just comes off just the littlest bit. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a slot. Ethan shot slid over, which Manley was trying to cover up. So you can't slide unless you have that help all the way down, especially to a player like Zach Greer. He's going to follow that slide. In box, you do far less sliding than you do in the field game. For those who maybe watch outdoor and not as much indoor, you want to try to avoid sliding as much as possible and definitely not sliding down low because then you give up that inside look. And a theme that has developed throughout this expansion season are these runs by these opposing teams that New York is playing. We've seen that in the early parts of games as Lomas is down right there for New York, but also at the start of second half of games where we see New York try to come back in the fourth. As the athletic training staff will have to check up here on Dan Lomas. He's been a key player for this New York team this year, coming in with 11 goals. And you see him with Belgrave and Radzowitz there in that, that late shot to that left knee, it seems, Mitch. Yeah, and you can see Belgrave just goes right into that knee. Hopefully it was just one of those where it hurts bad and he's able to come back. But those are always scary when someone falls into the side of the knee. Had a hat trick last game with three goals and two assists last year with Vancouver, the high point product in Lomas. And this is not a good sign for New York as he has been key on offense for Reggie Thorpe's team and also the offense led by Marshall Abrams. I hope that Lomas is all right. That comeback win, their first win, their, their only win at this point, he had that three goal run in the fourth quarter that led them back, gave Gail Thorpe the opportunity to tie it up. So that's certainly gonna be a big, a big knock for them if, if he's not able to come back. So Lomas is off there, still on the bench for New York. 11-7, we're even strength here in the midst of the third with seven minutes gone by. Berg camping out of this left-hand side, marked by one in Manley. Diagonal pass looking for Greer behind the back. That was majestic, but it came towards the corner board as Wagner was stride for stride with him. Was looking for his fourth tonight. Suter will come off on the change. Chetner's out there on the right-hand side. Digby operating on the left, marked by McIntosh here. It goes cross floor this time. A hard hit, though, on this near side there by Cam Holding. Lassini and company have it along with Holding again. And the captain, Merrill, regains possession for San Diego. Kieran Ricardo with a little rusty gate behind the back check. This is probably the most sticks being lost in a game I've seen in a long time. San Diego does a nice job of regaining that possession. Buchanan out there with Jackson. Here they are on the right-hand side again. Low angle shot there by Field. Scooped up by New York, though, and Jones. Jones cradling up the floor. Advantage here. Miles Jones robbed there by Demude. Jones was looking for his first in his debut, and Glissini has it the opposite way with Gobrecht. Connor Kelly coming off the bench, acted as almost like a fullback, keeping those 
substituting defenders from the seals off, letting Miles Jones have that run. Just isn't able to bury that one. Greer spinning towards his right, right past Radzowitz. Here's the rookie, Fields. He's been great so far. Pass Suter, Fields, backdoor pass, looking for Westberg. Abrams says no. Still keeping this a four-goal game with 6.20 to go. Shot will come off making his debut as well for New York. Chetner back out there. McRae, the captain, will run off on the change here. Chetner has two tonight. There's the seal by Wagner. Chetner towards his right. Chetner goes right on frame, and it finds the back of the cage. Cross the line for Jean-Luc Chetner. It's 11-8. No assist coming, but give the assist of credit to, to Wagner for setting all those picks there, using his body, continued to work as, as John Luke Chetner continued to move and move. He set pick after pick. That opened up that lane, allowed Chetner to find that five hole and bury it. And he has a hat trick tonight, and watch this just squeak past the dominant Nick debut tonight. Look at that great shot by our crew. Just through the five hole there for Chetner. It's and a big one, especially without Dave Lomas hurting him to get a hat trick in the ninth goal this year. And that's why you're seeing Wagner up on that offensive end, because without Lomas there, they need another lefty to come up and provide that support. So look for Wagner to take a couple more runs, setting those big picks. So he has a hattie tonight, along with Greer for San Diego. Buchanan in possession here for the Seals, as holding will come off on a change, in addition to Eli Gobrecht. And they'll get Jeremy Noble back out there on the floor as well. Noble right to the crease to the left. Abrams said no. Back towards the back door here. A foot was in the crease. A player came through. Let's check in with Danny, an update on Dan Lomas. Thanks, Dave. I can see Dan Lomas. He was just to my right here on the bench. He put his helmet back on. He put his gloves back on and grabbed his stick. Thank you very much, Danny. We hope that Dan gets back in there soon uh, with that goal for New York, the first goal in a nine minute and 39 second span. They need more. Digby swims over one man, it goes high. Ball caroms, who wants it? Chetner battling for it as a hard hit by Jean-Luc. And there's a look at Dan Lomas. That's Ethan's shot there, guys. Ethan's shot. Two fours. Dan Lomas. Two yep. fours on the jersey. Right. Just one on Dan. Caught that. So hopefully Dan can get back out there on the floor uh, for New York. Meanwhile, here's San Diego. Fields towards his right. Radigan and Jones marking him on that side on the defensive work. Towards the right, that's a good stick check by Miles Jones. And Jones got hit there on the near channel, though. There's Dan Lomas getting set to come on the floor on this possession, and he will here. He's on the right-hand side, Dale, and has it in possession for the riptide. Down by three. Lomas right at goal, but... Demute had it towards his left, and that will bring us to another timeout. With 422 of the third, New York has been playing comeback kids this year. Can they do it again tonight? Looking for their second win of the year. We'll see. Come on back to Nassau after this. Terrific game by these teams. Runs, though, lately by San Diego. That's allowed them to lead here by three. Suter has it towards the quarter boards. Pass Cotter Fields. And back the opposite way for Dan McRae. What do you want to see from New York in the latter stages of the third, Mitch? They, they've been getting the looks. Now they got to get those second chance opportunities if they don't score. So they've been hitting the, they've been hitting the goalie. They've been hitting the goal. Now they got to bury a few. And if they don't bury them, get that second opportunity to do so. McCardle out of cutting Gibson. Lomas towards the top. Connor Kelly again steered aside there by Damute. And a chance the opposite way for Reinhold. He'll come off on a change for Patrick Merrill's team. That's coming in at one and five. You're on this cross country trek. Here's Dylan Riley now. And look at their offensive players back on with Wesley Berg and Buchanan. Here's on that right hand side as well. Buchanan is running middle here. It's Greer who has three tonight. Went low. Abrams had it perfectly. Again, Buchanan started the game. Here's Jones now. Miles Jones had it dislodged momentarily. Jones with a burst of seed. 360 moves denied by Damien. Jones showing his physicality and athleticism. Runs through that check now. The hard part here is just understanding how to score on those small nets. He hasn't had the opportunity to shoot on anything besides a six by six net, so that'll just take time. And, and credit to him, he's running the ball in transition, he's making smart plays. 
Wagner has it here, and again, here comes New York with 2.40 to go in our third quarter. San Diego started off with a 4 nothing run to begin this third. Last goal by Jean-Luc Chetner in possession here with a hat trick. Wagner with a good seal that time. Jean-Luc is met by two. Belgrave helping out. Cross for pass for John Wagner. Met by one towards the middle. He threw it away, though. Wagner was covered by a player whose stick had either broken or its head fell off. We got no food. We got no jobs. Our stick heads are falling off. 2-10 to go in the third. Buchanan also has a tally tonight as well. Back door here for San Diego, looking for Casey Jackson. Greer, and again, that's the right pad of Goa Abrams. We'll stay on this end for the Seals with 157 to play in the third. And Dave, if they can keep this to an 11-8, 11-9, or even 11-10 quarter, I really like their chances the way they've been playing in the fourth quarter of games. That's exactly right. We've seen them play comeback in particular against Georgia with that overtime win, but also against the Wings here at home. Buchanan, again, Goa Abrams makes himself big there. It's a good hit by Wagner and company. And Ethan Schott making his debut. Brings it up the floor here for McCardle and New York. It's McCardle, the seal there from Lomas. Met by McIntosh as well defensively. Over to the left-hand side, Kelly. Gibson also out there, too. Here's Digby on that left. Pass right hold. Ops to go right here to Lopez. Cross floor pass. Searching for Gibson. Pass Belgrave in for Digby. That went off the post. And his foot went in the crease for New York. Caught that. Tried to immediately twist it around and get that in. That went near side pipe. I actually thought that that, that should have just been a reset. I think he hit the, hit the post before his feet went in. Here's Greer this time under a minute to go. Here in the third with San Diego up by three. Berg towards the top on this left wing. Cutting inside down. On that right, low shot, Casey Jackson read perfectly there by Abrams. Chance the opposite way on the long pass to Radzowitz. And Cody will go right towards the crease here. Ops to pull back now to Chetner. Chetner over the top shot went near side. It's gobbled up by holding, though, of San Diego. Ops to give it to McIntosh. And here's Garrett, doesn't have a goal this year. One of the stellar defensemen out of Drexel, who I'm told lost today to Hofstra in men's college basketball just across the street. I thought we were talking college across. I said, whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 Dave. It's still a little early for that. Not far, though. Yeah, really excited for that. Ten seconds to go. Here's Berg with a bouncer there. Oh, Abrams gobbled it up here. And that will do it for the third as Radigan will hit this off of Jeremy Noble. So it's a good run here in this third quarter by San Diego. A 4-1 run to be exact on goals by Berg, Clellan, Jackson, and Zach Greer. Yes, it's the debut of Miles Jones. He had an opportunity on a breakaway, but it was stopped by Demude. And we go to the fourth, 11-8 San Diego. Let's see that comeback after this. Start of the fourth quarter from Nassau Coliseum. Dave Litovich, Belial, Danny Wetzel, but our entire crew at 11-8 San Diego lead here to start the fourth. Danny just caught up with Connor Kiernan, who's the backup goalie tonight for San Diego. I'm now joined by Connor Kiernan, who is the backup to the backup tonight for the Seals. Connor, when was the last time that you were in goal? Uh, I've never played the cross goalie, actually. I played hockey goalie growing up, and then, uh, Kind of needed an emergency guy to go in, and coach asked me, and I said, yeah, I'll be in there. How did you prep for tonight? Uh, I had a nice lunch meal and then, you know, make sure I was going to fill out the net more, and, and uh, you just had a normal warm-up with the boys. Any advice from Shiliano or Demude? Uh, I texted Frankie. He said, just don't worry. Just go out there and uh, do your thing. And then Nikki just showed me how to hold my stick and stuff. Connor, thank you. Thank you. Dave. Thanks, Danny. And Mitch, I love that. He had a nice lunch meal. That's a quote from Connor <laughs> to make himself bigger. Yeah, the, the one the one opportunity to overeat before a game right there. <laughs> Start of the fourth here from Nassau Coliseum with San Diego up by three. To the left here, Chetner that was high there from Gibson that time. A chance the opposite way for holding it company. In possession, though, is Eli Gobrecht for San Diego. 
Again, if you haven't seen the New York Riptide play this year, yes, they come in at a 1-6 record, but they have been strong in the fourth quarter of games this year. Yeah, they've been able to claw back, and that grit that Coach Reggie Thorpe talks about, that's what they're going to have to display if they want to come back into this game. Here's Greer as a hat trick tonight. Sealed by Fields. He opts to go left, has a seam, and a delayed penalty uh, being called against New York. A man will go into the box. It looked like it was shot. We'll see. And that was Gibson. And so okay. that was a smart play by the Seals and keeping Gibson on. They recognize that they got Gibson down there. That's a, that's something you could do. We'll wait for the call here. New York number 19, a two-minute minor holding. So when you recognize that you have an offensive player stuck on you with a specialization in box lacrosse, you want to try to keep that offensive player, get him low, get him in there and force him to play defense. That's what they did. They drew a, drew a penalty. And up here in San Diego, they're two for two on power plays tonight. Here's Greer was looking near side for Jackson towards the corner board. Four into the box defensively for New York. Over the top shot is wide over to Greer. Jackson helping out. The loose change is gobbled up here by Suter and New York on the quick outlet up the floor on this penalty kill. Shorthanded on the New York riptide with Wagner. Great active sticks on that penalty kill. Knocking down passes, getting second chance opportunities. Blasted away with those stick checks. So great work there. They got to continue that for the next minute and a half. And Mitch has documented that New York has been good on shorthanded situations this year. On the right hand side, they're looking for Lomas that was knocked out in front there by McIntosh. Kelly with a little bit of a check there towards the body. It will be a shot clock violation. This will be a play on for San Diego. And Buchanan gets robbed there by Abrams. Abrams has looked so confident in that. Anytime that he's under pressure, he's just so methodical and waits out that offensive player. That makes a big difference when you're a goalie. And last year, played for the Wings. Alex Bouquet did make the start, but he was replaced in the first quarter by Reggie Thorpe and his coaching staff. Digby opts to go right now. Look at this pressure as well. How about the, the press by San Diego defensively outside the zone of this game? Big, big, big hit there. And Mike Manley has taken exception to that. A little bit of extracurriculars here in front of both benches. And Danny Wetzelman, watch out, Mark, down low. And, and you know what? I like to see this. Mike Manley says you're going to throw Tyler Dickey in as he's running to the bench. They, they need a little fire. And I was wondering if they got into a situation like this, who's going to be step up and drop the gloves if necessary. And it looks like Mike Manley is willing to take that role. This is what started all of this, Mitch. This guy's. There's Sykes. Sykes hit Digby before this happened. Sykes hit Digby as Digby was running off. Digby kind of took an awkward angle under the boards. I'm surprised that wasn't a call. And then it was Manley who said, you know, you're not going to do that to my offense. Great shots there by a camera operator, Mark Cohen. Mark, way to take charge there with Danny Wexelman. Mark, next time a boxing event comes in the Nassau Coliseum, we're going to have you suit up here. Mitch and I will be your athletic trainers and coaches in the corner. And I'll be curious to hear the hit on Digby, I thought for sure was going to be a call. Nothing was called, but you see the referees conferring. Yeah, this right. is a big call, Mitch, in the game right now. Yeah, the Seals are already up one man, so if they only call Hanley here, if they don't call coincidental, see if we can tune in and hear what these referees are saying. On that, on the gray side? Mitch, let's listen in here. I, well, I'm just telling you from back where I was, when I came in, I got 44. Okay, so I got 44 and I got, I got the number on this side. Okay. Hey, Jared, go get me 44, please. So they're calling in Graydon Bradley of San Diego. And again, keep in mind, this was a, a man up here. You see with the 29 seconds with Gibson in the box. Uh, Bradley's going to go in there, too, for San Diego. And it looks like Manley's going to well, get away with. in the box, right? What, what number do you want over here? I got five. Okay, and point four is already in the box. So Manley can go to the box, and then two weeks rough. It's four eight, four minutes each. Yep, so Manley's now going to come in as well for the New York Riptide. We'll get the call from Garrison.
His mic pack isn't on, but they're going to call two-minute minor roughing penalties against both San Diego and New York. So Bradley's in the box for San Diego, and now two men in the box, Manley and Gibson. Here's what started it Just again, Mitch. Double minor. Here we go. Now we're in action. All right. San Diego, number 44, a double minor roughing. New York, number five, a double minor roughing. Those penalties cancel out. Field strength stays five on four. Ball's heading San Diego. Well explained there. So it'll be a five on four situation. And I think the Riptide are a little bit lucky here that, that they gave the double minor to Bradley as well. I, I honestly think that might have been a little bit of a makeup for missing the hit on Digby um, to keep things even. But we basically end up right where we started, just two guys taking a little bit of a four minute rest of the box. Man up here for the Seals. It's Fields with 15 seconds to go on the power play. Berg to the left, back up top for Noble, opting for Fields with the shot, he scores, and a big power play goal for San Diego on the road. And that's Connor Fields, his first goal. He's notched up three assists, but first goal for him, that left side really getting the ball over to the righties other than on the cuts. He makes no mistake, puts that one short side. And again, Abram so strong in the five on five. It's really only been transition and power play where, where he really hasn't had much of a chance. And now San Diego and Patrick Merrill enjoying a 5-1 run in this game, stemming from the third quarter. So just Bradley and Manley in the box for San Diego and New York respectively here. And the Seals tonight, Mitch, this sums it up three for three on the man-ups. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good average. Here's yeah. Fields again, and a diagonal pass successful to Westberg. He has his second tonight, 13-8 San Diego. Skip lanes, skip lanes, skip lanes. This defense has to make sure they're playing off ball, and they have to make sure that they are up in those passing lanes as that ball gets transferred over. You can see. Shots looking, they switch that pass, and there's just a miscommunication down that backside as Berg slips down the back pipe, is able to catch that almost with his feet are behind the line, but he keeps that stick above the goal line, catches it, and dunks it in the empty, empty net. Next weekend, it's the NLL game of the week. As it moves to Vegas, as Connor Fields at the Seal Toast, Dylan Ward, and the Mammoth at Orleans Arena catch all the action on BR Live as Holding goes in and scores there right into the fans of the sandbar. Holding adds his second. He got the score. It started tonight. Just like that, it's a six goal advantage for San Diego. Cam Holding, he's one of those guys. He suffered a knee injury a few years ago that slowed him down a little bit, but he is so dangerous in transition. One of the best players from the back end moving up into offense, and now we're going to see a goalie change again. Bouquet's going to get another shot, put him back in. And that's something that people who aren't familiar with box across, you actually see more than you would think where you, you pull your starter, put the backup in. Depending on how the backup plays, you might put the starter back in, and, and so that's what we have here tonight. It's three goals scored by San Diego in a span of 24 seconds. It's, the, it's these runs in games pitch that have been hurting this New York team. It all starts in that first quarter, and San Diego's gotten off to a lead, and then we've seen it here in the third and fourth. A penalty here upcoming against the Seals on a cross check. It was Chetner who was towards the left of Davoud's cage, and a man going into the box here for San Diego. John Luke Chetner shaking that one off, took one of the chops. San Diego penalty number 25, a two minute minor, illegal cross check. Gobrecht into the box, and here's why. Gobrecht just follows that slide down, slides up with his top hand, gets him right under the chin. Five on four there, and Demute comes up with the stop towards his right. New York also very successful in the power plays tonight. They're two for two. Lomas towards the right now. Chetner to Digby on this two-man game in the return here for Gibson. Gibson! That went off the pipe that time. It's scooped up, though, by San Diego. And Can't they're going to have it. a breakaway opportunity. It's holding again. Went reverse stick that time again, but standing his ground was Goa Abrams. Nice job by McRae getting back and hustling, forcing forcing that shot, and Bouquet is back in there, so he gets to get a save, another save under his belt. Okay, Bouquet is back in there for New York. 
to the left now, and Kelly. Kelly now over to Gibson. Got the seal there by Kelly. Room for Chetner went low, but perfectly read there by Debut. Again, making the start for Frank Shiliano is out due to injury as our Danny Wetzelman uh, talked with Connor Kiernan. The backup to the backup tonight as a field player is, is backing up Demut. And there's Connor Kiernan. And what a sport he must be for this Seals. We mentioned he had a big lunch and ready. You know, Mitch, we were talking about it joking at our production meeting about the type of jersey that he would have to wear for tonight. Yeah, those goalie jerseys are a special cut there, extra large. I don't know if he's just stretching that out. Maybe that explains why he's not wearing shoulder pads. That right went now. off the crossbar, so I think we should see a reset of the shot clock. Possession should stay with San Diego. And I believe the officials are conferring on that, and, and, and that looks like it will be the case after this timeout. 9.54 to go in the game. Connor Kierden and the San Diego team enjoying this six goal lead over New York. Nine fifty-four remaining in regulation and a six goal advantage for San Diego as you take a look at the sandbar just behind Alex Bouquet. Riptide season tickets, fan experiences, and single game tickets are now available, plus much more to purchase. Visit New York Riptide.com or call 516-402-3006. Some good seats behind one of the cages here at Dassault Coliseum. I remember there was a hard hit into the boards where the fans really felt it back in that first half. The, the value you get from an NL ticket, it, it's just, it's such a great game to watch. You get to see these players up close. They're so accessible after the game. It's just for, for someone who, whether you're a lacrosse aficionado or whether it's your first time, it is just a great experience. So I'd recommend that, obviously, if you're listening, you probably have been to a game or you're a fan, but you got to get out and, and bring some friends because they're going to want to come back. It is a fan experience like no other, the closest you can get towards the action and let's see if their New York team can rally back down six. Gibson back on the floor. Bradley and Manley still in the box as we're playing four on four here. Kelly, diagonal pass, looking inside for Gibson. He has two tonight. Net by three to Vetter's hard hit by McIntosh. We're going to get a call and another penalty against San Diego. And that's, that's your number one draft pick taking a high hit. This is where it would help to have an enforcer and Andrew Suter has filled that role in the past, but you know, you got to stick up for your teammates. What a handle there by Tyson Gibson, and then just gets absolutely cleaned out. So you know what? McIntosh will go into the box here. Looking at that, it, it didn't actually look as high as I initially thought, but he followed through high, so I think it's probably going to be a two. You can see Digby's over there arguing for a five minute for the high stick. San Diego penalty to number three, a five-minute major illegal wow. body check. This should help New York in this situation. Plenty of time to go. Here's another look at it. Watch number three in gray. Three players on him. The fourth comes and cleans him out. Yeah, he hits him high. So that's a good call again, trying to keep players safe. Danny's got more on Gibson. Danny. This week. Thanks, Dave. When I talked to Tyson earlier this week, he said he knows the team isn't isn't playing that full 60 that Reggie Thorpe talks about a lot, but he likes the resiliency, the grit, and the heart of this team. He said you can't teach that. He's working personally on his energy and the positivity for a full 60. Dave. Thanks, Danny. Five on four. Chance for Kelly denied there by Demud. Good to see Lomas out there scrapping for loose balls. He's okay after taking that shot to the knee earlier. Here's holding shorthanded here is San Diego, a 5 on 4 in favor of New York on the power play, and it's Buchanan now just trying to dwindle the clock here. You see Digby's hanging out, forcing them to play 3 on 4. Jackson in possession here for San Diego, low angle shot, and boy, that almost beat Bouquet. That one, I, I thought that went off the pipe and in. <laughs> That had eyes. There's Gibson and company still man up here. Digby towards the right has Chetner. Lomas on that backdoor opportunity. Gibson now got the seal from Lomas and went wide. Demuda nearly got a piece. Kelly regains the possession here on the power play. Gibson towards the top. 
four in the box defensively. It's Digby stopped there by Demude. And numbers the opposite way, shorthanded for Gobrecht. Well, bounce it over to Belgrave here on the near side with Wagner back there defensively, along with Gibson. Again, Manley, Bradley, and McIntosh still in the box for New York and San Diego, respectively. And they've got Chetner out there on the man down, trying to just get him sparked so maybe get a little transition or a quick opportunity on the power play right away if they get the ball. Behind the back here, and Noble just dump it in with the shot clock. Violation there, but San Diego doing a tremendous job on the penalty kill here. So we should see a man coming out of the box within the next few seconds. Remember those two double minors called on Manley and Bradley for roughing. So Bradley and Manley will come out of the box. It still will be a man up for McIntosh as he's in the box. And the Riptide still on this power play here with 6.53 to go in the game. And this is where seven minutes, six goals, it's not impossible, Dave, and that's what's so exciting about the NLL. But they're going to have to start chipping away quickly, and they got to take smart shots. Again, they'll be man up for the next three minutes. Again, if they start scoring, that, that, that eventually will go away. Remember, it was a major penalty called, so 2.40 to go on this man up here for Gibson on the right-hand side. There's the duck opportunity. Demute says no. Robbing Lomas that time, and a big hit towards the quarter there by Gibson. It will go into the seats as the young fans will have a souvenir. And now Digby will have it in possession for New York. Digby at the top, behind the back for Gibson here on the man up. On the right-hand side, Gibson again behind the back. Digby, that cross floor pass diagonally to Lomas. He has it. McCardle is near him. He opts for Kieran. Two-time All-American from St. John's over to Digby. Spinning away, went wide. Terrific defense by Cam Holding. Fresh 30 on the shot clock there. Lomas on the stick check. They did not realize that the shot clock did reset there, and possession, therefore, will belong to San Diego. That's a tough draw. Dan Lomas, if he had gone for that, he definitely would have had that ball, and he just thought that that was two, three seconds left in the shot clock, not realizing there was a reset there. West Bergen Company in no hurry here for San Diego, looking for their second win of the season, and he goes low, but Bouquet was there to collide his feet together. It is a San Diego team really coming off of back-to-back -back losses to the Rush and also Halifax where they haven't been scoring all that much. Nine goals against the Rush, five goals against Halifax. A team tonight that has put up 14, and that is the most goals they have scored this year. Add Casey Jackson back into the lineup. That's a big boost for them. Gibson walking in, Demute had it big. Here's Chetner towards the top and well wide. It comes towards Kelly. Back to Chetner, has Lomas to his right if he wants him, and he opts for Digby there. There's that diagonal pass on the one-timer. Digby went for the hit there, pass Sykes. Kelly feeding Digby, he scores! Tyler Digby for his second tonight. They get one back. That was a thing of beauty. The one-handed whack to keep that ball alive by Gibson. Then the back door, alley -oop dunk, puts it five hole. A couple more of those, and they're right in this thing. Just spot feed there by Connor Kelly. Puts it up there, says, go ahead and get it, big fella. Catches it, one motion, puts it below Demude, who's been excellent tonight. The first goal for the New York Riptide, and get this, over 16 minutes. Second goal tonight for Tyler Digby. That negates a 7-1 run by the Seals in the game. 440 to go. And with, with Woodall at the faceoff dot, they have a chance to get more possessions. That, that is a key here. 30 seconds on the man up as McIntosh, you see on the bottom of your screen, is still nestled in the box for San Diego and Patrick Merle's team. Greer's back out there also as a hat trick tonight. Jeremy Noble has been big tonight. Wes Berg has had a much better second half of the game. Connor Fields also has a goal this evening. 
Here's Noble, he lost it in transition. Here's shot, numbers the opposite way. Wagner comes off of the chains. Suter has it towards the top now. This right hand side, Kelly right at goal and wide. Nice check there by Scott Johnson. We haven't called his name too much. I don't know how many reps he's got, but having him with fresh legs coming out in the fourth quarter, that could be a spark, especially with his ability to push the ball in transition. McIntosh is out of the box on that major, and it's intercepted there. By the New York Riptide, we're even strength, and it's McCray who had that turnover. Look at that cross floor pass by McCray behind the back from Digby. Jab step save there by Damien to stop Lomas. What a sequence that was for New York. It will take us to another timeout. 3.31 to go despite this New York team down five. They're trying to claw back in transition. Watch Digby. Over to Lomas and Demude. That's been the story. He's been strong this evening in New York. And now it's time for the play of the game. Brought to you by Geico. It's the John Rannigan goal in the early going. And look at this work rate right by Rannigan. John Rannigan, heart and soul. You see this effort. He loses the ball, earns it back, and then diving shot near side with a little fist bump. That got the boys going early. They're going to need that spark if they want to come back in this one. Down five with just under four minutes to go. And it was his first goal of the year. The last three years he spent with the Georgia Swarm, including that title in 2017 with our very own Mitch Belial. 3.15 to go. Seals up by five in possession. Fields over to the right. Swimming around that time, McRae. Fields has a scene towards his right behind the back there. A big check by Mandley. And Bouquet gobbles it up and looks for the long outlet the opposite way with Suter. Numbers here for New York on a three on two. Back to Digby looking for the hat trick and wide. And those are the opportunities. They just didn't pick up Digby there. He's got to bury those. Gibson gets it back on the return on the left hand side. Navigating towards his right. Jab step here. Lobos behind the back. Walking in. McCardo. He scores! Kieran McCardo, and it's a 10 spot for the Riptide. It's a four goal game. Near side. Tuck it. Good night. Kieran McCardo just buries that short side. Showing those soft hands. Ron Konkama guy played his college ball at St. John's, kind of the border of New York City and Long Island. Showing why he has that touch. Putting that right in that top shelf. Nice job. We talked about him having to step up. Now would be a good time. Let's go downstairs to Danny with more on Kieran McCardle. Danny. When I talked to Kieran earlier this week, he actually told me the reason he plays box lacrosse, San Diego's Brody Merrill. Brody texted him about four years ago and said, hey, what do you think about Toronto? They're looking for a few guys. And the rest, as they say, is history. Dave. Danny, thank you very much as the two are going up against one another in this game. Gibson cross floor pass again, searching for McCardo as he tried to go back to back. There's Brody Merrill, who's playing in his 15th year, coached by his brother in Patrick, and what a job he did last year for San Diego. In fact, last year as an expansion team, finished second in the West with a 10 and 8 overall record. Patrick, Dave, a longtime player, as you played with him, and he also starred for Toronto. And Dave, they didn't even, they haven't even sent Abrams or, or, or Bouquet back in net. They're just going to say, go ahead, try to score on us and, and have a player hop back in net. You know, Bouquet, not the, not the fleetest of foot, so they're just going to say, let's put, be athletes, let's try to stop them from getting high quality shots, and let's get our offense back in there. When you're down by four, you're going to have to take chances. 90 seconds to go, McCardle fires wide. There's an open cage down the opposite way here for San Diego, and they're going to get a chance here with Sykes. Sykes trying to regain it there. Sykes lost it, dislodged there. A perfect play by the New York Riptide at Chetner. Nice takeaway. What defense by Chetner there. Gibson low, stopped by Demude. Gibson trying to get this back. He will not. It's Merrill the opposite way. Open cage with 105 to go. A hit there by Wagner. Gobrek still in possession and open cage. He scores past Radigan. And Dave, that was just a matter of time, I think. Excellent effort by the Riptide defense to stop three or four shots, but eventually and got to give a ton of credit to Eli Gobrek right there. He ran through a huge body check. Twister right around Randy. Randy almost with the acrobatic save. That might have had to change our, our Geico play of the game if Randy makes that save. A 
Abrams is going to go back in the cage here. And that epitomizes what San Diego, I think, has done very well in this game. Yes, I know a cage was open there, but their transition game tonight, we mentioned the teams that we've seen that have been very stealthy, like the Rush. We know Halifax has been doing a great job, even though Warren Hill's been successful uh, defensively for them in the cage. A team like the Philadelphia Wings with Matisse and Baptiste. But, but this San Diego team, with only a 1-5 and five record coming in, having graded that. Let's take a listen to the officials that are reviewing this call. Any scoring play under two minutes are going to take a look at. So this is, you know, Gobrek was close to that crease. Was the ball in before? I believe it was, but it really is going to come down to where was this left foot. I uh, can't get it from that angle. I think he did a pretty nice job of keeping his foot out. Right, if that foot was on the line before the ball does cross, this one will be negated. Oh. I mean, right there, if that left foot is touching the line, that's no goal. Yeah, tough angle to see. Rannigan's body is just in front of that. If they had an overhead angle, might be able to tell where that foot was. This one, Wagner gets in the way, so you can't see. Called it a goal on the field. That's it, everything? And here, Mark Giordano with the intercom said, that's all you've got. So I don't think they're going to find anything that they can turn that over with. After review, the call on the floor stands, you have a good goal. It'll be a five-goal advantage for San Diego and another tally for Eli Gobrecht. It's his first goal and a rookie from Ithaca College. And congrats to him in his rookie season getting on the board for the Seals. And it's a San Diego team that's going to wipe out a two-game losing skid and earn their second victory of the 2020 season. On the flip side, the Riptide will lose their second consecutive game to Philadelphia and tonight to San Diego. An empty netter there for Eli Gobert. They still count as one on the score sheet. I'll tell them that. I've scored my, <laughs> my fair share of empty netters. You've got to take them where you get them as a defensive player. We're going to get another call here and a cross check upcoming here against San Diego. As Drew Belgrave, BCIT product, will go to the box for the last 21.5 seconds. San Diego number two, a two minute minor illegal cross check. This New York team tonight, three for five. On power plays. Both teams, in fact, have been strong on man ups. Here's Digby with that left hand side. It's Gibson. And Tyson Gibson has another hat trick in his rookie campaign. His second hat trick this year. It's 15 11. The sense of urgency. This is, it's easy to play with that sense of urgency hey. when you're down late. This is a sense of urgency they need to come out with every game, and that's something that Coach Reggie Thorpe is going to work on as they get this bye week to regroup, watch a lot of film, and get ready to go later in February. Well, and then Woodall for the faceoff draw. It is won by Alex Woodall. And up next for the New York Riptide after the bye week on February 8th, they'll play another. West Division foe at Calgary. Then they'll be at Georgia. And that will do it this evening as San Diego erases a two game losing skid and wins it on the road. Their second road win this year, 15 11 over the New York Riptide. NLL post game live will begin after these words as San Diego improves to 2 and 5 on the season. Miles Jones and the New York Riptide signing autographs with the home faithful, but New York falls by four to San Diego. Downstairs, Danny Wexelman, joined by Zach Greer, who had a hat trick tonight.
Zach, you guys came a long way for this win. How did you execute your game plan tonight? Yeah, big one for us. I think, you know, we were able to watch their game last night. We knew they were going to come out with legs playing back to back, and then we just had to stick with it. Um, goal is to, to put the ball in the net, move the ball on offense, wear them down, and it paid off for us in the second half. What can you say about the effort of your backup goaltender, Nick Demut? Yeah, unbelievable job by him tonight. First NLL game, right? A big one for him. A lot of energy, a lot of emotion, but he settled in there and, and had a huge night for us. Next game in Vegas against Colorado. What can we expect from that? Yeah, it's going to be exciting, right? Our ownership group is, is pushing the envelope with this sport and getting support from the NLL. We're, we're excited about it. It should be a lot of fun and, and really good for the league. Zach, thank you. Awesome, thanks. Dave. Danny, great work tonight as always. And Mitch, here are the final totals, a plus five in shots. Look at the power plays. Both teams have been key on that at 100% for San Diego this evening. Yeah, that power play was a big difference maker. But more importantly, it was that big run in the third quarter that, that put San Diego up. And unfortunately, New York Riptide just could never come out of that hole. They had the edge on faceoffs. They got the possessions. Um, I think the turnovers was another number that, that ultimately that really hurt the Riptide as they turned the ball over 22 times to 18. Those four possessions, that's the difference in the game right there with the four-goal four differential. In fact, you were referencing that 7-1 run by San Diego in the midst of the third and fourth quarters. Once again, our final tonight, 15-11 in favor of San Diego. Join us on Saturday, February 15th at 7.30 when the Rip Tri travel to the Georgia Swarm live on MSG. Visit NLL.com for an all-access pass to the National Lacrosse League and get the latest news, highlight stories, and more. For our producer, Scott Zolotaro, our statistician tonight, Dan Severino, Mitch Belisle, Danny Wexelman, and our entire MSG crew, this is Dave Leto saying thanks so much for watching and good night from Nassau Coliseum. You have been watching a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League.